Stephen B. Bradford Anderson. We we have a very wait, there's a middle, wait there's a middle name there's a middle name there don't I can't remember what your middle name is Thomas Michael I mean it's 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 kind of a it's a classic name I I think you would say wait George John uh, it's it is a member of the Brian? royal family right now don't Charles an heir to the throne. Come on, just tell me. Second in waiting. What is it? I don't know. Who? Prince. Who? William. What? Oh, William. That's... Dang it. Don't hurt your car. It's not your car's fault. I know it. I, I remember. Brad, that's right. William Anderson. Dang it. I used, to, right. I, used to, I used to tell people that I reminded them of Prince William. <laughs> <laughs> people I'm didn't glad, tell me... People didn't I'm tell me that to tell them. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, I think I had it in my head hey, that some. That's... I think I had it in my head that someone told it to that's me so once, funny, and so yeah. then I've been like, "Oh yeah, people tell me that." I remind them. So you just go. Up, you go up to people. Hey, you know who I remind you of? Prince William. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Although, I mean, I don't want to jinx it, but I do have better hair than him now. One hundred. Uh, jinx it. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna jinx it, bro. Well, I don't want to lose it, you know. I'm, I think I your wanna... arm has better hair than him. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> Although Harry, Harry's got a good set of yeah, he's got he's good, he's pretty good, hairy. Good head of hair. Yeah, um, yeah, good head of hairy. Yeah. Um, so hey, listen, you're a yeah. working man now. You're dude. Like I working. I um I I I've been at I've been at GH every day this week. Uh, one was unplanned. Uh, some things yeah. got moved. Some things got moved around, so I ended up working yeah. uh, an an extra day, which made it yeah, uh, yeah. a full five day work day. Which, um, yeah. well, and, and it's 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 crazy because I, you know, we were on tour last week, and um, yes, we you know, were, buddy. And then, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, and then I flew back Sunday morning to Sacramento because that's where my return flight was. I got to Sacramento about one p.m. And then I had a flight out of Sacramento at about 8.30 that night to come to down to LA. And yes. uh, so, and then this weekend, I'm in Florida for the St. Jude oh, tournament. that's right. That's tomorrow. I fly out. I take a red eye to Jacksonville tomorrow night after work. Straight through? Yeah, JetBlue does a straight to Jacksonville. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. So good. I'm trying to plot like out that. my sleeping between over the next like 48 hours i'm trying to plot it out well i would try to figure that out because you need some sleep well yeah so i'm gonna go to, go to bed super early tonight and then i have to check out of this airbnb that i'm in i'll go to work whenever that is i, don't, I haven't got my call time yet for tomorrow and then i'll probably sleep for like four hours in whatever dressing room i'm in after i work yeah turn off the speaker bro yes is it clockwise or counterclockwise do you remember Oof, you're gonna have to I should go into your room and just see where the arrows are. <laughs> yeah, you should. Because you drew it on the <laughs> friends totally. in our in the dressing room of the General Hospital. It's like an old intercom speaker, and in the middle of the speaker is a screw, a, a screw, a literal like a flathead screw. Yeah. That for some somehow I don't understand the logistics of it at all. It controls the volume of the speaker. How does that work? <clears throat> Do you understand how that works? Well, it is kind of, it is, honestly, it's not a screw. It's a, it is a, it is a small knob, but you would oh. think that it would be sticking out of the speaker so you could actually control it without having to put something in there to control it. Right. I thought but, it was the, I thought it was like the screw that also holds the thing into the. No, top. no, 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 no. But, but the problem is they don't want actors turning it off because actors they do. Right. And then it's off for the next people. You know, if somebody else is coming in the next day. And they can't hear the speaker and sometimes totally. you can't hear it in the hallway, you know, and right. when I was, when I was just over at days, theirs is so loud, dude, there is no mistaking when you're going to stage. And there's no dial. There is a dial because they have okay. two stages there and it's super old school. Like the dressing room I was in and I believe it was, actually, I think it was Greg Vaughn's dressing room. So his, I was, you know, cause he lives in Texas right now. I think he flies in back and forth, but, but I was in his room. And it was the the speaker was literally like the ones that you would see in in school when the principal would call. 
like it was like a it was like a real legit box speaker hanging out of the wall wow right? but they have two stages there so they had a toggle two and four stage two stage four right yeah so but but one side didn't work at all and i'm like oh i'll just okay stage four today whatever i didn't know what the frick i'm doing dude right like sure. oh let's put on stage four nothing i'm like oh. i can't am i hearing any calls what's going on here like i don't hear anything did you get a knock on your door being like Mr. For, Burton? no i went up finally to the stage manager because they ha- how they have it set up is pretty cool like like you walk into their building and um you know there's production in the booth and stuff is right away when you walk in down oh, some miles and then they have two like booths for two stage managers so oh. so if you're on stage two there's one stage manager in the booth in, in this like little security booth but it's mm-hmm. their kind of little you know that's their home and then the other stage managers doing the scenes and then, they'll, and, and then they'll flop, right? But so many people have questions all the time, like, you know, hey, what scene am I in? Or where do I go? And, you know, all this stuff. So the stage manager, they have their kind of little office up there, which was really cool and helpful. Um, like and, like our stage uh, manager desk, kind of? Yes, yes. But, in, but it would be like in the hallway. Sure. Right? Like you would yeah. have, it was a big enough studio where they had it, they had it set up where two of them were in the hallway. So... Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting always to look at people's operations, you know, how, how, how totally. shows do things a little differently, but it really is all the same and the same output. Right. So, the, um, um, so the, the dressing room situation I was in earlier this week, I, I was assigned to Tristan's dressing room and mm-hmm. his AC was broken and it oh, was like boy. set to like 82 and it would just, the knob would just spin. Oh no. Um, yeah. and I was like, ah, I, I, and I'm wearing like. If anyone's seen oh, my no. wardrobe lately, it's a lot of layering. And I was like, yeah, I, cannot, I, I cannot do this. But no other room was available until, thankfully, um, one of the ladies in wardrobe was like, hey, you can use the baby room. And yes. the baby room, and I love the baby room. Have you ever been in the baby <laughs> room? You well, yes, you know what's great? Cold, the ba- yes. It's, 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 it's very well uh, air conditioned. Yes. And it's also right next to the bathroom in the back corner that no one uses. Yeah, it's great back there. I was like, and it, it's just a beautiful place to sleep too. I was like, ooh, if yes. there's no babies here on Friday, I might go there to sleep. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think that's where probably wardrobe and everybody crashes at lunch. Oh, for real? I never even thought. Yeah, you know, because they'll, like, they'll, they'll, they'll go in an empty dressing room half the time just to take a nap during lunch, right? So. I'm yeah. sure that's one of them. Right. You, better, you right. better put dibs on that when you get in. Bro. Let's let's talk more about <laughs> naps. Um, well, we have our friend Kelly Tebow coming up in a few minutes. Um, yes. But we were on tour. We were on tour last week. We hit um, we hit Batavia. Well, and actually, you know, on last week's podcast, we were in hell. Where were we when we did that? No, we weren't in hell. <laughs> we weren't. Um, no, we weren't in hell. We were in, uh, we were in Columbus. In we were in Columbus. Room. We were in, yeah. in, right. In the green room in Columbus. In the yeah green room. Yeah. Sorry. Dressing room. Green room. Yeah. Right. So I guess we only had one show after that. So we don't have to recap the whole, we, we already recapped. No, no, we, had, we had one show. We had, we had Detroit, which was great. You know, that, listen, the, the, it was all, it's always fun to be on the road. We always get to do some great stuff. We always get to see great towns, cool people. It's always really fun. And this time we had a Friday off and we went to Cedar Point. Okay. Yes, we hadn't done that yet. We hadn't done that yet. And Jeremy was like a kid in a candy shop. Like this guy's a roller coaster maniac. He loves roller coasters. He goes on every roller coaster, him and his kids do, and his wife, Amanda. And uh, he was so excited about Cedar Point. Now, I haven't been to Cedar Point for years. You haven't been there for years. No, nope. you know, it was random. It was pretty random that you even went there. I mean, I grew yes. up in Ohio, so we didn't have much of a choice. And Cedar right. Point does have some great uh, roller coasters. Right. You know, and and for me, I don't mind heights. I don't mind the dr- like. I prefer the dropping mm. of the roller coasters. Right. I don't mm. like the corkscrews and the and the upside down. That's not that's not fun fun for me. Like right. I would literally drop out of an airplane. That's what I love. I love that feeling. And so we went, you, 
me and Brett or me and me and Jeremy did the Raptor first, which was actually pretty cool. Um, and then we did the Blue Streak. Now, the Blue Streak. Okay, there were two. There was two roller coasters when I was growing up. It was the Blue Streak and Gemini. That's all we would hear about. Sure. Are those two roller coasters like on commercials and stuff when I was growing up? Right. Just opening the Blue Streak and Gemini, right? And so we went on the Blue Streak because there was no, it was traditional roller coaster, kind of just yeah. up and down hills, some dry, a little bit of a drop, right. but there was no loops or corkscrews or whatever. The worst, the worst roller coaster I've ever been on. Just okay, because you never really think about like in your average day, you never go, Wow, the technology with roller coasters have come a far way. Sure, right. Like, I mean, you would never even think that until you go on the other one. I can't remember what it was called. The the tallest at some point it was the tallest roller coaster. Millennium Force. Millennium Force. Like, dude, the technology between these two, like smooth hydraulics all the oh, stuff dude i mean honestly I-, I thought that millennium force i was like i don't know about this one like this well, is legit well i mean the g-force on that is nuts though dude it's like a 340 foot drop and the speed like and you're going inverted too and you're inverting it's like an 80 degree invert yeah and you're so like, like this ain't normal well because normally and we talked about this a little bit that like i don't love when my stomach goes into my chest like that feeling i don't love yeah. that feeling but normally it's pretty short-lived right because it happens quickly yes. the thing with millennium force is it lasts <laughs> for like a good seven uh, six seven seconds like yeah. straight like oh it's a drop bro. yeah it's a good one but i'll tell you this like because it drops and then it goes into a hard bank you know and and the, you never felt any jerky motion at all like sure like the blue streak was just like I needed a chiropractor, a massage, uh, acupuncture, a In, steam room. Yeah, because the other that. ones are lo- are actually low impact. Where that one actually has some impact because, yeah, yeah. So so the Millennium Force was awesome, and it felt like literally I was in the future on this people mover that was just moving a hundred miles an hour without any feeling. Yeah, it was badass. Like, do you remember when we when we finished the blue streak? And they're like, oh, how was the blue streak? And you heard like one clap. Yeah, everyone like, was like, they, oh. Yeah, oh. they're like, oh, you heard more moans than you heard claps. Like with Millennium Force, dude, people were cheering when this thing was over. For sure. Like in excitement. It was fun. I, I, I wish I, there was a, I, I had a couple concerns. Like I, I was worried about my back and I just didn't feel, I, I didn't feel on top of my game. And I was like, I just didn't. Yeah, yeah. I no, just it was wasn't good, dude. So, and I, yeah. I, I needed kind of a down day. And mm-hmm. I just didn't want to. So I had a nice walk around and it would, the, the weather was beautiful and we were right on the lake. Um, yeah. so, but I was very impressed with you because one thing I didn't want, I, I didn't want Jeremy to feel bad because I was happy to be there. I just, I just did not feel like having, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was, I, I hadn't, when we do shows, I get enough adrenaline. I don't need, I yeah. didn't need adrenaline sure. that day. Um, sure. But I was so glad that you were in the spirit of things because I know that probably was fun for him to have a riding partner. Yeah, look, man, uh, like, you know, we're, we're used to going to Disneyland, right? And, and you're going to do a roller coaster there, and then you're going to have a big break between the next, what, it, Tower of Terror or whatever it's called, sure. uh, Galaxy, yeah. Guardians of Galaxy, not whatever. You know, so there wasn't, this is just 10 roller coasters. Right. You know what I mean? There's some downtime, but the downtime is you walking to the next one. Well, and there, there's none that are, like, intermediate, no, there's not at all. So it's like, oh, this one, and now go here, and now because I had to take a break, and you found a great little, whatever it was a, it was a, it was a music venue. It was a kind of a saloon. Yeah, it was the best right? place in town. Best oh, place in yeah, li- like literally the best place in Frontierland because that's where so, it was. Whatever, yeah. it was amazing. It was like oh, it was nice and cool. It was awesome in there, right? Best place. Um, yeah, it was the best. And so I had to take a little bit of a break, and Jeremy went on some more by himself. And then on the way out, I go, okay, we're going to walk out. He goes, oh, I'm going to do this last one. I said, all right, dude, I'll do it with you. Let's go. So, you know, yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was, it was yeah. a good, it was a good day, man. And then we got to, we got, we got in late to Detroit and you know, it's all good. Yeah. And all Detroit, good. the Mark Ridley's comedy castle is, is such a fun venue. We had a great show there. So thanks to everybody that great came show. out and, yeah. uh, so fun. And yeah. And now, uh, it's been, um, 
a busy week back home. And so, but I, I've been doing such fun stuff on the show. I can't wait for everybody to see it. That's and, awesome. Uh, one, one of the benefits is that I, I have been able to work with our next guest. Um, yeah, buddy. And I know you cherish the time that you had with her. I and I, I think uh, she, I think, you know, she's nominated this year. And I, I, I think um, some of the work that you guys did together um, may have made it on a reel. So we'll hear about yep. it. Uh, enjoy our chat with Kelly Tebow. It's Kelly Tebow, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Kelly the Tebow. famous oh, Kelly Tebow. So famous. We, I'm not sure we talked about this last time we talked. What, what is the worst mispronunciation of your name? Did we do that? We did talk about this, Bradford. We did it just because it every time, every time I just Spit occurs it to out. me, it probably happens all the Spit time. It out. That's all. Yeah, I mean, it's very rare that anyone gets my name right. Um, I, right. I couldn't begin to tell you all the ways that people people butcher it, it's really bad, <laughs> right? Well, hopefully, they get it right when they uh, during the Emmy nominations. Do they get it right during the Emmy nominations? I think so. I had to last year, I was a presenter and I had to send them a voice recording of how to say my name. Amazing. and. If I'm re remembering correctly, she she got it right, yeah. So hopefully this year will That's be amazing. Good. I need to talk to Kelly because I have not seen or talked to Kelly in so Tebow. long. In so That's long, right. and I miss her. But before we st started recording, you've been traveling everywhere. I have. Like I've seen you. I don't even know how many countries that's been in, but whatever. So it's just like it's crazy. But you were watching a soccer game or football game before you got on here. Yeah. I was, because yeah. I've now become a fan of Everton, which is a um, Liverpool team. That's awesome. So where, where have you been traveling? Like, yeah. what is going on here? I know, it's pretty exciting. I started dating someone in December that lives in London. Go oh, there, there you go. Yeah, I know, it's, it's all pretty nuts um, how we're making it work, eight-hour difference. But that is why I've been doing so much traveling as of- Oh, cool. Months, yeah. Wow. So where have you gone? Um, I went to Italy. I went to London. Um, I think that was it. Oh, really? Oh, that's it. Yeah, in Italy, I did Venice, Florence, and Rome, which cool. was awesome. Um, and then I went to Liverpool in the UK, which I'd never been to because that's where he's from. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. and so is is Everton maybe a team that he likes too? Oh yeah, I mean I only know about them because of him. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Right. That's now, so funny. following the Premier League is a great way to learn the geography of like <laughs> the United Kingdom, yeah. because like in our country, you know, there's a couple cities that have like multiple teams on the same sport, but mm -hmm. there, like, how many teams does London have? There's like nine. Or yeah, crazy. I'm still learning about it all. But even like Liverpool, they have two teams, and it's this. I mean, it's a it's a big rivalry that's going on in the city with that. Are you red? Are you blue? It's all these things. So. Right. Crazy. And I just watched crazy. the Matrix. Yes, yeah, last night, Resurrection. So it's like red, the new one. Red, blue, blue, red pill, blue pill. Yeah. Um, the new one. I haven't seen it. It's it's um, it's sentimental. I I, I enjoyed it. It didn't get great reviews. Yeah. But mm. in the con in the conceits that they built to try to make it make sense, nah. But it's still fun. <laughs> it's still fun. Sure. Speaking speaking of fun, you're nominated for Emmy. <laughs> what the? F can I say that? Well, yes, you sure well, can. This sure isn't did. the first one, is it? Yes, it is. Shut the front door. I've only really? submitted, I've only submitted twice. Um, the first That's time. That's amazing. Submitted. It was more of like a comedy reel because I was like, you know what? I'm going to be different. Everyone's crying. Woo -woo. I'm going to be the funny one and, you know, see if that works. And it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, can, that doesn't work at all. <laughs> I can back. I can back that up. So yeah, it does fine. not work. Sure it does not work. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and I, because I remember the only person it works for, I think, is Tony Geary. No, yeah. It worked actually for um, one year, Charles Keating, I think, this, this actor, and Ian Buchanan. They both uh -huh. had some comedy on their reels. Wow. Back back in the day. But go ahead anyway. So what, well, did, what you, did you submit? Did you balance you like the old reel? Did you have dramatic as well? Because the, the thing is, it was hard in the old days. I don't, I don't know when you submitted your thing because it was you had like you had to submit an episode. Now you can submit pieces. So right. like you could do. Do you know what I mean? Sorry, I missed that. What did you say? Like when I, I when I used to submit because I haven't submitted in a long time, it used to be a single episode when, when first it was two full episodes and you couldn't omit anything. You had to put everything. So like, oh, wow. but now yeah, it's like, you can, 
yeah. you can piece together stuff so you can show your range a little bit, um, which, so that's cool. Which is great because a lot of the times, you know, I mean, even from a whole year perspective, you don't, it's not like the whole year you have incredible material, you know, it's not, it's, I mean, maybe no. because you work so much and you were such a popular character, but like some of us, like, it's like you get little nuggets here and there sprinkled throughout the year and thank goodness they allow you to kind of put all that together and submit it. For sure. Yeah, I, for sure. I'm glad, I'm glad they did that because for a long time, even, you know, most people would probably consider me lead. Yeah. Right. Like I never had two full shows of six acts of good stuff. Um, like you would submit one full show of something good. And the next show I'd be hiding in the bush for four scenes. Right. right? So it's we're like, standing stoically then, or standing stoically next to someone. But then you're, then you're screwed. Like yeah. you're screwed. Like I know they used to make sure Tony, well, Maurice had a lot of stuff all the time, but Tony definitely had, his two shows for sure, you know, uh, right. but it, this just makes this kind of levels the playing field, you know, where, you know, you're in no matter what. So you get to pick your stuff from the year and put it in. And what did you pick Kelly? What, what kind of stuff did you put in? I put our breakup scene. Uh, I think so, I led with that. Um, and then I did when I tell Carly that Jason died. Um, and then, um, there was a couple moments like after the cave in when we were like frantically looking for you. Uh, it was like a group for, scene. for that, like that, like five minutes that uh, about four, se about four seconds. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot, Brett. Thanks for nothing, Brett. Man, I tried. Um, and you did, you did not try. Did you watch the episode? No, I didn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I didn't watch it. What else? Uh, let's see. So the stuff after the cave-in, um, I think I submitted, I think I put it at the very end of the reel uh, when I found out I had Huntington's disease. Mm. Oh, yeah. Cool, uh, man. Yeah, we, we, had a good, we had a good run going. We had a good a while. year. Yeah, or it wasn't a full year, but, you know. We yeah, had it was a good one. It's some good stuff, good scenes. Oh, and then there was a scene of you and I um, after, like, when Sam comes to give you a passport to leave. And then you're like, oh, yeah, on Sunny's Island. We had this great, like, back and forth conversation that was just really, really good. No tears or anything. It was just like really good dialogue, really good conversation. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. So, in, in, did you like that's a lot of work to put that together, though, isn't it? Um, it was, a, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't too terribly difficult. Do you have I anyone mean that else kind of watch for you? Yeah, after I did my initial selections, I sent and they and they sent me the the first like edit of the reel. Um, I yeah. sent it off to a few people. Got um, I didn't get a lot of opinions, but I got a few opinions. I talked to Michelle, our producer, a lot because sure. I was also conflicted about do I go to, in the lead category or do I go in this mm -hmm. category because I don't see myself as the lead on the show. But I feel like the material that I was submitting was lead worthy right. uh, but i decided to do supporting i just think because i'm not someone that's like been in the business a long time the soap world a long time um and i haven't been nominated before i was like you know what this is probably the best route for me so isn't that, isn't that interesting yeah like because i yeah, mean it's a tough it's a tough one but i think you made the right choice yeah well because i mean now like you know we're having we're having some fun stuff now and you are kind of positioned as a as the leader of a storyline right like in 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 a, in a lot of ways um so but but i but i i understand your your well number one your humility going into the process because i mean that's always a, a nice way to approach anything yeah. but um but yeah like it if you if you end up submitting next year, like I, I wonder if the advice would be different. You know what I mean? I don't I, I don't think so personally. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, I think I think I mean just in my opinion and what that what's that mean anyway. So but you know if if she was if she was there for the next three or four years solid working like she's working now, then I would say yeah she's taken over a lead role sure in, in the sure. show. Right. So I, and then that's not to say she's not a lead. She knows I'm I'm her biggest fan. I'm just saying right. from from like she said, yeah, she has great stuff and it is leading material, but she feels like maybe she's not a lead on the show. It's like 
e- like even Laura, if she had not a lot of stuff, she couldn't put herself in sport. Yeah, I mean, right. You want right? And that's the thing. I think a lead, like you want your leads to be seen almost every day on the show. Right. Right. I'm not like I go a week and a half sometimes, and I'm I'm not on. Sure. 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 Yeah, yeah. I, and I guess like when you when when you have at our show like uh, people of the the esteem of Laura of Mora of Finola of Nancy like you know like uh, I remember because I remember when Jason Thompson was still on our show and he was debating the supporting versus lead yeah, yeah. and um but at that time the 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 supporting the supporting category can be incredibly impacted. Yeah, that's what I've heard because there's so a lot, a lot of people to compete against. A lot more than there is, there is for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and remember, remember when there was a two step process. You know, oh, only yeah. a few people from the show could make it out of the out of the building, as they would used to say. Like, and and I knew it was always going to be Tony and Maurice. Yeah. Right. Like it, I forgot Lee, about that. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So it was always going to be those two. Like only two people from like each. What do you mean? Yeah, it was some kind of stipulation where I don't I don't believe they took the two highest votes of something. They you couldn't have like four leads of of guys at General Hospital in one category. Yeah, I get that. Right, right. So um that's a, another reason I used to put myself in supporting a lot too, is because of that reason too. So anyway, yeah, but yeah. Um what I, I don't know anything about the 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 ceremony. Do you? I know it's live and that's hey oh. Yeah, it's live June, June 24th, which is a Friday night. Um, and I hope oh. you're doing it. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy that this is the year that I got nominated, you know, because I guess actually get to go and- yeah. which Do you know where it is? I'm really nervous. <laughs> Do you know where it is, what the venue is? I, no, I, I mean, I can look it up, but I, I forget. Uh-uh. Yeah. But it's still, you get to get dressed up. I mean, do you have any- I, I, Did, Didn't this happen what, last year, Brad? Sorry Which part? to interrupt you. The, didn't we do Port Chuck last year the same time with these Emmys? Remember we were watching the Emmys? Oh, during our rehearsal night? Yeah, during our rehearsal night. And this is rehearsal night again, right? June 24th? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing a, uh, this is kind of an announcement. Uh, we are, we are, uh, we're doing yes. a live streaming Port Chuck concert Saturday, the, Saturday June 25th. Um, the day after the Emmys, so, so that's so funny though. All right, festive we- festive weekend. Festive it week- is a festive. When you guys sing a song for me or something or whatever you do, totally whatever you uh, want. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me see. How many songs are named after Kelly or Brit? Whatever you want, Kelly. Oh, there's Kelly. Kelly. There's a Kelly song. Yeah. By I who? It goes, but I've been told. Like what? By some <laughs> Irish band or something? Oh, <laughs> Find it on YouTube and send it to you guys. Oh, you're I'll right. It's probably it. yeah. it's 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 probably yeah. It's probably an Irish song. You're right. Well, it'll it's be like an old Irish. an old Irish ballad is what it'll be, and I'll <laughs> I'll get super super pissed and sing it for you. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Don't don't oh, ask boy. me to do that accent. I um, would. <laughs> yeah. Um. So would now. Okay. So I remember this as well. When you're when you're a presenter, they pay for your guest because you're working for the production. When you're a nominee, you have to buy your guest's ticket. Has that come up yet? So I heard, cause yes, I knew about that in the past. Um, no one has said anything to me yet. Right. I think that's so crazy that as a nominee, you don't get one guest. I know. Right? Yeah, it, 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 seems, it seems backward to me. Like, yeah. but- uh, uh, Yeah, you think so? Um, she's very nervous, my mom. She's like, so do I have to get like dressed up? And I'm like, oh, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Yes. Mom, it's like evening gown. She's like, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna wear. <laughs> That's amazing. That how fun though. Are you nervous? And she was like, Well, no, I just don't have anything. I was like, it's okay, mom. We'll we'll go shopping before and we'll figure it out. Does she live yeah. nearby? So what are you gonna no? do? <clears throat> In Texas, and she's like, you know. She's not used to anything fancy. Like, you know, it's yeah. going to be, it's going to be a big night for her. We, my first nomination, uh, I brought my, <clears throat> no, my first Emmy awards. The first time I went to the Emmys was I, I brought my mom too. And that was, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so how is it, how, what's your, what's your preparation process going to look like? You think? 
Um, well, I don't know. I haven't, I'm like, I'm kind of dragging my feet with everything. Um, That's but... a smart idea. <laughs> I think I'm probably try to find my own dress at first. Like I might do that next week, just bop around town, see what I can do. And if I can't, then I'd have to hire a stylist or something. Well, that, that's the thing is like, I don't, wow. Tell for the people out there that may not know, like, to, like do you just go on to the interwebs and search LA stylist? Like how, how do you start that process? Like, do you look in the phone book? Yeah, the, you know, phone books don't exist anymore. I think Google is our new phone book. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's really stressful. There's a couple of like um, agencies that represent stylists. So I could go that route. Mm. Um, I tried to reach out to one on Instagram that I follow who styles Kate Hudson. And I was like, come hey, stop hey. me for the daytime Emmys, you know? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> she's like oh sorry i'm on vacation um and then oh. i reached out to a couple of friends to try to get some recommendations of silas but no one has responded so oh, man. okay wow. they- i mean if only it was 1989 they'd get back to you only. But, they- but then you'd have to look up look them up in the phone book there we go <laughs> yeah uh, so i mean so i funny. so will they also tell you who to who to borrow jewels from I mean, I don't see myself borrowing borrowing jewels, but um. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, Bradford. <laughs> As I should, Bradford. What do you think? Well, I don't know. It seems like a seems like it's something people do. Yeah, I mean, I want to look good, so I mean, maybe I should borrow some jewels. Well, that's not, not? In que- that's not in question. <clears throat> You're going to look good no matter what you wear. But yeah. the process of like, I don't like. I don't know, because I think some people, you know, probably a lot of people assume that this process, the the outfitting yourself and the the the, the glamour of it is the fun part. Um, and I'm sure in a way it is, but but yes. The not fun part, yes. I um so last year as a presenter, I borrowed a dress from like a style house, which I can also do this year, but some of the dresses are kind of just worn and you know, they're not they're not great. But this yeah. one that I thought it was really beautiful. It's this beautiful color green. So yeah, it, I I remember. Yeah, it was great. So um, I go home to Texas in July, and now my whole family—they're like huge General Hospital fans. And my uncle, who I never in a million years would peg as someone to watch daytime television ever, he's a diehard fan. He came over to me. He was like, we were, they were talking about the Emmys and stuff, and he was like, and I know you didn't pick that dress, but that color looked awful on you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow didn't pick that dress and i thought it looked great <laughs> what, what is what does uncle bob in texas know anyway uncle joe what do you know uncle joe come on uncle joe um, he's got he's got wranglers on so don't even pay attention to him i might have to, to you know get his approval this year or something i'm not sure no you don't need you have to give him a, a uncle joe a preview shot that might that might <laughs> that might not go over the right way yeah. <laughs> Uncle Joe's like, I'm getting, never mind. Um, <laughs> oh, Bradford. Well, you gave me advice on, you gave me advice on, I was, I was during our scene, the, one of the benefits of having um, uh, an, uh, an iPad with my script on it is that I can online shop sometimes while I'm on set, on set. And I happen to be <laughs> online shopping today. And uh, I have, I happened to see Kelly and, and I said, Hey, between this, this I- kind of, orange sherbet polo in this green polo which one should i go for and she's like Did i always she go say with green? green and yeah. she's like i she I, she's like i love green and wow. i uh, yeah and you went for it i went i went for green yeah nice yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so i probably would have too bradford yeah that's good nice well i mean for you you can't because the the shirt that i was looking at was about the color of your face so that would not have worked out well for you when I see you, some things aren't going to work out well for you. Fair enough. Fair enough. Person. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so uh, I'm trying to think what is aired. I, I, cause I know so much about your storyline, but I don't know what, I don't know what has aired recently. Um, so the stuff that I want to talk about, we probably can't talk about yet. Not yet. 
I mean, I'm guessing I, I, I'm guessing I know what you want to talk about. Um, I don't well, know. I, I, he told me a hundred times already, so I'm guessing I know too. <laughs> so, um, but, but I don't know if you can, Brad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. Um, huh? This episode or this, this, this video chat thing we're doing, when is this going to air? As soon as I can edit it and turn it around. (laughs) Yeah. Literally in five, in five minutes. I should have, I should have gone into the recaps to see what's, what's aired because I so much, because some of the stuff that we've been shooting now doesn't air till July. Listen, listen, here's all I want to know. What's that? Who, who is Brit getting closer to? That's the, she's looking, she's out there. She's looking and oh, she's her looking. mom, her mom and people are, you know, people are Who's trying her to mom again. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Got it. I got it. I got it. I, re- I just remembered. Okay. Yeah. So it's looking, um, it's been quite difficult, you know, with the, uh, well, I mean, after Jason, it's going to be difficult. Well, big shoes to fill. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she's looking, um, I don't know, you know, it's interesting. I just don't want to be with anyone. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> yeah. Hey, sometimes being single on a show is not a bad thing. So I don't well, know. You, I mean, you have you have so many different storylines that you can be a part of. Like you and you and Perry always have a great you, yeah. like the the trouble that you guys get into. Um, but you're also, you know, you have what's cool about your character is that you have friendships with I mean, you get friendships with Maxie, you have friendships, like you have hospital friendships, you have like familial stuff with your mom. Like you have so many different people that you can, that you can work with and you're not, you're not painted into a corner in any way, which is fun. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they're all my friends, like Brit's friends, but she definitely has a lot of people she can work with. Yeah. Right. And that, that, gosh, that's a blessing. Like it it is, um, and it just makes it, you know, uh, makes it more fun because different energies every day and you yeah. Know, yeah 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 um, the, the stuff that we just shot i'm excited to see it air it's gonna be really funny yeah i think uh we have a, a, a nice blend of uh some humor and uh some dramatic elements and some charming elements and are you yeah. charm- that, that that's why they certainly that's why they put me into any storyline is to bring charm <laughs> yeah that's what i'd say about you yep Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Uncle Joe what he thinks about Spinelli. Yeah, I'm gonna. Kelly, we, I gotta I gotta I should have sent my polo choice to Uncle Joe. See what yeah. he says. Yeah. Um, funny. So, well, it, it, it's cool that it's on TV. So the whole state of Texas can cheer you on. Yeah. And uh, that's amazing. We'll certainly be cheering you on, as for well. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly and, Tebow. I love you. I miss you. You're so you were such an awesome partner. So thank you. I love and miss you too. I miss you every day. Um, oh, thanks. It was an amazing time. It truly was. It was cut short, but um, you, I, the stuff that I have with you is, I think, the biggest reason why I was nominated because we just had such great chemistry and we really worked well together. So thank you. Yeah, for that. it was awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. I carried some blood. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah he did he had his backpack full of blood he was ready yeah kelly tebow emmy nominated kelly tebow you're the best emmy, emmy nominated actress forever emmy yeah. nominee Great. kelly tebow <laughs> good to see y'all thank you right. thank, thank you, you thank you thank appreciate you appreciate you thanks so much